the most important show I have done this week. Let me tell you why. I've got a Jewish doctor here, an actual MD, a Jewish doctor, a professor who teaches doctors. And what's the best thing about him, he doesn't make you feel dumb when you ask him questions. He actually also is a messianic believer. But that's to the side. It's a very rare thing to find an actual Jewish doctor that shares all of your beliefs. And uh, and then on top of that, he's a scientist. He's a researcher. But what makes him great is he became famous because he stood his ground when it came to giving dangerous vaccinations to children. So he's a man with a conscience and a heart. That's what makes him so anointed. Well, anyway, I, I brought him in to do a mastermind. It's when I get like 20 or 30 of my friends, and we sit at the feet of somebody who has mastery in something and listen. And we recorded the mastermind. People like invested thousands of dollars in getting a medical training for like a whole day. I mean, a hundred slides. And he was explaining to us that the, the future of medicine is going to be in a thing called epigenetics, has to do with your cellular structure, how to activate, protect, and restore cells. There's 36 trillion cells in your body. The art of being able to target them and activate them to do certain things is the future of medical science. He was explaining this to us. We got fatigued and he delivered a rebuke that I'll never forget. He said, in this day and age, you cannot trust the medical establishment to be totally authoritative or the pharmaceutical company or the government. You have to be your own doctor for the sake of your loved ones, for the sake of your own life. Learn what you need to learn. And then he proceeded to just bring us right back into this intensive. I want you to get that. I want you to get that training. Plus his additional uh, hours he gave me in his studio for women that are discussing hormones and for people that are discussing depression and uh, gut health. And it's just the guy's a genius. Dr. Neil Goodman, you can get his material here at level10biohacker.com. He is the ultimate guy to hack the system in terms of improving your health by understanding the codes that make it work. Level10biohacker.com will give you access to the genius of Dr. Goodman and what we invested in getting from him in an intense day of training. You're going to love this guy. We're once again going off the beaten trail of what other people talk about and giving our own unique perspective. And I guess this is 40 years I've been doing this. And over the course of 40 years, you do develop some instincts. And one of those instincts is I don't like conventional thinking. I think, you know, like the food pyramid when I was in school, oh, eat that bread and drink that cholesterol. And so then later on, you find out they're killing you with, uh, you know, all that stuff. So I'm looking at all things conventional and saying, no, we need to have unique, out-of-the-box thinking, because it might be closer to the truth. With me today is an out-of-the-box expert, my son Carl, who is constantly, from his childhood on, challenging my bias of conventional thinking and making me think and rethink, many times modifying uh, my conclusions. So Carl, this is a great subject for you to be here on, since you're into peak performance uh, the the chemical, biological aspect of peak performance is a physiology piece. And then, of course, I've got our producer, who normally is hidden behind the scenes, but Chelsea is with us. Hi. Hey, Chelsea. Thank you for having me. Now, I'll, I'll tell you the truth about Chelsea. She's always running out here and saying something I wish she told the audience. And she tells me, you need to say this, you need to say that. Today, I am free from that because she's here to say it. And, uh, and she'll give us uh, what I think is a woman's perspective, which is sometimes lacking among men on, uh, on subject matter. So we're going we're gonna to appreciate your jumping in where you think we're, we need to have, okay, maybe the women want to know something. Feel free to jump in, uh, Chelsea. But our expert today is Dr. Neil Goodman. Dr. Goodman, uh, I, I could actually, I should have in front of my bio his prestigious biography and curricula detail. And so Dr. Goodman has over 39 years of experience in integrative medicine, combining Western medicine with alternative treatments. His background includes extensive experience, 14 years service as a major in the U.S. Army and teaching roles at various educational institutions. He's, um, he's actually, I would say, an inventor 
In some cases, you have uh, doctors who are in the lab creating solutions to problems. And this is his uniqueness. He does original research and comes up with his own inventions. Consequently, he's kind of famous as an MD in um, taking a stand for children's health when the vaccines were coming out and not compromising. He would protect children rather than bow his knee to the medical establishment. That's when he got on my radar as a hero, uh, one of those rare doctors who is not only competent, but will not compromise his integrity in order to make a living, even if it jeopardizes his status in his community, in the hospital, et cetera. He's a courageous man, an original thinker, and as it is, a believer, which is fascinating. You don't run into many Jewish doctors who share your messianic uh, view, worldview. But Dr. Neil Goodman, please join us. Good, good to see you, my friend. Great to see you, too. Thank you for having me today. All right. So you are a uh, you did a, a, a powerful session. And when I first met you at our Level 10 um, event in California, and the audience was so enthralled that we just did a, a poll with the group, and they all said they wanted to have a special seminar with you. Well, we never got around to having 100 or 200 people come back to be with you like that till uh, we actually had uh, we went down to the Trump Doral and did another health and wellness summit. Everybody was blown away. Second time, we did a mastermind with you. And here's what I finally realized, Doc. Then I'm going to let you do all the talking. What makes you unique in my world isn't the fact only that you do your own original research, that you come up with solutions to problems that are really scientific breakthrough, but that you, that like Jordan Peterson, you don't dumb down your, your, what you're saying in order to, in a sense, put the cookies on such a low shelf that it sacrifices medical science in order to communicate an idea to the average Joe. You talk to your students as though they were medical students. You demand of them a level of sophistication that you know they're capable of but aren't really required to. When we go to doctors, they treat us like we're stupid. They have the answer, and the answer is this prescription or this procedure. You, on the other hand, discuss how did we arrive at that conclusion, what are the alternatives to that conclusion, and what are some potential therapies that are, that are outside the box of what we're looking at now. You talk to us like we were medical students, and you know what? It isn't as complicated as people. I, th I think some, some professions shroud what they do in complexity in order to keep the average guy away from them. But you <coughs> lawyers. Just pull, huh? Lawyers. I was yeah, lawyers a is lawyers. a good example. Yeah. But you pull the veil back and make it simple, even though you don't compromise science. So with that thought in mind, uh, let's let's kick off one of the big questions we've got, Carl. Yeah. Question number one: uh, What would you think we want to we want to start with? Yeah. So um, I, I just recently got my hands on the course, and we start with epigenetics. So for those unfamiliar, would you mind telling the audience a little bit about what epigenetics are, how they're affected? Um, yeah, just kind of explore that for us. Well, I think that's a good question. You know, um, you mentioned the course, and I guess you're going to uh, present that option to people here shortly. But um, epigenetics, if you take the word apart, epi means above, and genetics means your genes or your chromosomes, your genetic information. So when you talk about epigenetics, what you're really doing is you're talking about the science of all those things that are above that speak to our genes. Uh, those can be good things and they can also be bad things. So epigenetics, an example of epigenetics in action would be say someone who smokes cigarettes. Uh, when they're breathing in cigarette fumes, those fumes may affect their chromosomes in a negative way and may or later turn on a gene which causes cancer. So that would be an example of something negative epigenetically. On the other hand, also pollution and various environmental insults. But on the other hand, we also have the ability to speak to our genes using good things, which usually come from nature and foods primarily. So we know that eating and taking in certain foods and supplements can speak to our genes in a positive way and cause our genes to activate or express themselves in a way that will harm us or possibly even heal us. 
So that's essentially the science of epigenetics. On the bigger frame of things, we oftentimes, when we do something to our benefit, whether it be by taking a vitamin or taking a supplement or doing something that's good for us, we refer to that as biohacking, uh, which is why I named myself on my shirt, the biohacker or biohacker USA. So when we biohack, we take biology and we hack it, meaning making it better. So we are making biology better for ourselves. And those are all ways to get this whole epigenetic thing going to allow ourselves to heal. All right. So the um, and, and you made an illusion of the fact that we're going to have a course because we did record the mastermind that you gave us, which um, people uh, attended out in 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 Florida at the Trump Doral. But you also did some studio work and you cover a broad section of information from epigenetics. It's part one. It's part two. Because the genes, as you convinced me with your, and how many slides do you have? I mean, you literally do a medical training. Is Oh, my gosh. Um, each slideshow, I think for each lecture, is probably 100 slides. <laughs> easily, easily. I'm telling you guys, I mean, I'm struggling to put into words. You, there was a moment when Dr., uh, the doctor was teaching us and Dr. Goodman was, and the students were were kind of like, complaining about 140 slides. I mean, he was just not holding anything back and he stopped the group. And it was a beautiful moment. He said, in today's world, the way that these companies are structured, the way that the medical community is incentivized to pursue certain agendas, you have no choice but to be your own doctor you must raise your level of awareness about what's going on. Take responsibility for your health and for your family's health. And I, when I heard that you're going to need to be your own doctor, boom, that was when the light went on. And I realized that's what this webinar is. That's what I'm doing right now. What I'm teaching you right now in this show, in this broadcast, whatever, you, however you're going to watch it, is you've got to be your own doctor. You need to learn how to biohack for yourself because... The, the consequences are life and death in a day like today that we've lived with shutdowns and lockdowns the way that they happen, the incompetence that has been demonstrated and the lack of accountability, I might add, that has been demonstrated in the medical world and in the government. So uh, real quick, epigenetics, we're going to try to take the genetic um, baseline of our cellular activity and we're going to remove the toxins and destructive factors that cause the aging and the breakdown and the disease and the whatever else. And we do that by, by, by in a sense, re-engineering lifestyle. And then you've created certain products that you believe can transform that or reverse that deterioration. So real quick, I need some lifestyle choices. I'm, sh I'm sure they're obvious, but I don't want to, I don't want to miss this idea of the plasticity of our makeup, that we can change the damage that's been done. I, I think I think a good analogy, I'd like to, you know, I, I, I like, in my teaching style, I like to use props and I like to use visual aids because I think they help us to, if I just keep talking and using big words, people's eyes roll up in their head, like you mentioned, and they're just like, okay, I'm done, right? So we got to keep people engaged and we got to get it on their level. And that's what these talks attempt to do or these lectures are an attempt to try to bring it to the people so that they have an understanding and demystify um, all of these things that people just need to know about. So one analogy I like to use is that of a DVD disc. I don't know if you can see it on the video there. I'll get the reflection right. So imagine if this DVD had your genetic information on it. That's all of your genetic code, all the signals for how your body is to work, how it's to repair, how it's to heal, and how it functions. Now, if in your daily activities of, of life, you're exposed to pollution, um, bad food, um, fast food, uh, poor choices in smoking, drinking, other aspects of health that might affect this, you essentially scratch the surface of the disc. This is that epigenetics the epigenetic above the genome, it's coming in and it's damaging the disc. Well, the information is still there. 
Your information is your information, how you function, what your mom gave you for genes, what your dad gave you for genes. But if now, because the disk is scratched, your body is not able to read the code, then it's no longer able to perform the essential functions that it was designed for. So, so, so essentially, the environment has damaged us. And those are all of the environmental insults that I mentioned. Like I said, food, poor sleep, a number of these different lifestyle choices, eating a lot of sweet food, et cetera. Uh, and also a natural, um, well, not 100% natural, but some of the recent assaults that we've had in the last two to three years that have hurt a lot of people, those have created genetic damage. So our goal is to repair that damage by activating the, the uh, healing processes that allow our body to read the code again. That's essentially what we're doing. And we do that by utilizing food. Food allows us to repair the surface so we can then get on with the business of all the normal metabolic processes that our body needs to do in order to live a good, healthy life. Are you saying that food can actually rewrite the disc if we eat the right stuff? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and there are, and in fact, and we talk about this in my course, we talk about specific genetic signaling pathways. They have names, and I can name some of them for you. Uh, one in particular is called the NRF2 pathway. Well, the NRF2 pathway is responsible for our cellular aging. It's uh, responsible for our ability to detoxify. It's responsible for inflammation in general in our body, and it is one of the main guardians of our genome, of our genetic code. So if we are able to speak to that particular pathway, we turn on this whole downline assortment of other genes that will follow in suit that will allow us to heal and, and allow us to recover. So the sooner that we're able to do that in life, the better, rather than, you know, if you get to uh, you know, middle age and so forth before you act on it, you want to, of course, it's always useful to do this at any time in life. Don't get me wrong, but the sooner you do it, the better. And in fact, there are specific foods that speak to the NRF2 pathway, things as simple as broccoli and kale. They have ingredients that are NRF2 activators. Who would have known? Well, God gave us all of that. And that's what this is uncovering, is what are those tools that we can take benefit of, make use of? And then also, how do they compare to the pharmaceutical grade NRF2 activators? There are those too. We'll actually find that the, the activators that are coming from nature are actually better than those that man came up with in the drug industry. I'm curious, what are some common misconceptions about genetics and heredity that your course addresses? Well, okay, you bring up a very good uh, point, Carl. So I like to use the, the, the statement that your DNA is not your destiny. Uh, case in point, my particular DNA is, is that both my mother and father died when I was a young man. Uh, my father died of a lung cancer when I was 17. I was exposed to all that cigarette smoke for 17 years. Couldn't escape it in the household. Um, he died within a matter of a few years and had overwhelming cancer and metastases everywhere. Mm. My mother died some nine to 10 years later because of her secondhand breathing of that cigarette smoke, and she ended up with breast cancer, which there is a link. Again, this oncogene is turned on by you know hazardous environmental situation. Well, they gave me both of their genetic codes. Well, when I was in my mid-50s, I was approaching the age which they died, and I didn't know if I had any ability to overcome that inheritance, inheritance and so... I wanted to start to change my own genetic code from the standpoint of getting that healing going and activating pathways that might have been damaged so that I did not have to meet that same destiny that my parents did. And so happily, I'm 65. I've beat that by 10 years. And to be honest with you, I'm aging backwards. And a lot of people who activate these gene sequences by using food are able to, in fact, halt the process of aging and slow it down to a tolerable level and mm. again, uh, begin to get the um, evidence of actual healing and improvement. 
I have a question. You're, you're talking about you can use food to help your body recover and heal. Is this something that we talk about in the course? I kind of like to talk about, you know, do we give examples of what kind of food you can eat in the course? I know you also talk about intermittent fasting in the course. Um, so just though, again, that uh, the pathway that intermittent fasting seems to tackle is a pathway called the NAD sirtuin pathway. So here you have another genetic pathway that can be spoken to by various actions. Well, intermittent fasting is one uh, way to activate the NAD pathway. It increases our NAD usually by almost 100% in 72 hours when you intermittent fast. It changes your metabolism so that you're burning uh, fat fuel instead of carbohydrate fuel preferentially. It allows for improved cognitive thinking and healing. It suppresses cancer generation, improves our ability to get rid of dead cells. So this pathway is being indirectly activated by the action of intermittent fasting. So as part of the course, we talk about how to intermittent fast beyond and above the other mechanisms of directly activating these pathways using supplements and foods, food products. When, when you say intermittent fasting, real quick, what are we talking about? Like intermittent fasting? I, I fast every time I go to bed and when I get up, I eat again. So, uh, well, you know that, so that is intermittent fasting. Well, we take it to more of an extreme, of course, most people will fast maybe eight hours. They'll go to bed at, say, 10 o'clock. They'll wake up at 6 o'clock, maybe. And so that would be eight hours of fasting. But the magic starts to happen in the body at about 12 to 14 hours of fasting. So we teach people how to delay their breakfast to lunch, trying to get a little stretch on that period of time to enact certain pathways to turn on this mechanism by which we heal. And if we can take that even further, we can intermittent fast, meaning uh, uh, only eat within a narrow window, perhaps in the evening, maybe six hour window in the mm. evening of eating and then fasting the rest of the day. That would be more appropriately termed intermittent fasting. Well, one can achieve incredible things when you do that. Not only do you get weight loss, but you get improvement in your mental functioning and you get improvement in cancer surveillance and you get improvement in the ability to um, prevent ourselves or possibly help ourselves not to get diabetes. So there are huge implications. Hmm. I, I'm, you, you said something earlier which really intrigued me and it had to do with in certain areas, you can reverse the deterioration, the decay, so that there are categories where you could be reverse aging. I mean, that, you know, my, it's my, my, I guess it's my marketing ear that goes, I would like to know more about how can I reverse, yeah. as you get older, the fountain of youth is a mythology, but wait, if I can hack, biohack into certain things that I can actually see reversal in, it's physiologically what? possible. Absolutely. And, and there are markers that you can actually measure before this type of therapy and after the therapy so you can see your progress. And it's a normal part of my evaluation of patients in the office, which I see, and I'm still practicing medicine actively. I have people come in with all sorts of issues and problems, and we will go ahead and do this assessment and mark that point in time and find out how, is, how bad is their oxidative stress, which is a marker of injury. Uh, how well do their mitochondria, which is your uh, cellular energy uh, production system, uh, how, how is that system functioning? How much toxins did people accumulate? We're looking at a lot of different thing in, things in the office. But to, to your point, if we can identify what those are and say what their status is at that time and then embark on this process of using nutraceuticals, that means nutritional products that act like pharmaceuticals but aren't, uh, that come from God and that come from nature are natural, uh, we can actually engage those systems and then see the patient's progress. And many patients will tell us that they have completely transformed. The vision may have gotten better where it was bad. They may have had issues with um, glucose regulation or blood sugar regulation that have been improved. They may have come off of some of the medicines that they were on for um, different health conditions. So lots of different people will experience different things. Some people who are having issues with nerve issues or um, neuro neuralgias, as the term is often used, will improve. So there are many, many different facets of biohacking, or in other words, 
turning on the gene systems that allow for self repair. This is this is so big. Okay, Chelsea, what uh, what would uh, some of the women out there want to know about? Okay, well, I actually have one question. I wonder, is there a way to biohack your hormones? So I know hormones can be a part of your DNA, a part of your environment. It's something I definitely feel like, you know, it's been told to me, hey, you're being hormonal. <laughs> but, you know, what are what are ways that we could biohack tips and tools, you know, you could you could give to help le- balance out your hormones? Right. Well, first one that needs to know what your state of hormones is before you start, right? That's really important. But understand that the term hormones refers to lots of hormones are nothing more than signaling molecules that speak to certain parts of your body where they have a receptor that they talk to. And when that receptor is activated, then that hormone has an action. Well, believe it or not, vitamin D is a hormone. It's not only a vitamin, but it's a hormone. So it's important to have a good level of vitamin D. We know it affects your immune system. We know it affects your ability to think. We know it helps prevent cancer and helps prevent uh, uh, diabetes and also can uh, help in our be able to withstand viral insult. So that's a hormone. Thyroid hormone, which helps to regulate metabolism. So obviously, if your thyroid is affected because it has been damaged by the environment, this is that oxidative stress coming in to damage something, that now thyroid is not able to perform its function as well. When we start to activate, for example, the NRF2 pathway, we actually end up reducing this insult on the thyroid gland. And as a result, it can now produce more thyroid hormone, which enhances our metabolism and allows us to burn calories better. So those are examples of how Hormones can be affected by doing these biohacking maneuvers using food and supplements. But then you also sort of allude to the concern about uh, hormones as it pertains to women, estrogen, um, progesterone, and in men, testosterone, of course. Well, these organs, the testicles and the ovaries in women, also suffer from oxidative stress, meaning damage from the environment. And oxidative stress is basically a big fancy word that basically implies that they're inflamed. And when a tissue is inflamed, it cannot perform its function. So you may not need to get hormone replacement. You may only need to help that organ to heal so that it can do its normal function. Uh, Anything that's left over that needs help might indeed help with a hormone replacement. And that's still possible too. Well, doctor, listen, I can't believe we've already gone through uh, our whole show here and we've only got halfway through the the questions we had. But uh, we're going to do another one because there is a fascinating study, scientifically verified, you're involved with it, that has to do with the power of the second brain, unveiling the stomach to head, the gut and the brain connection, and showing how diet actually affects the mental and emotional health aspect. So uh, let me just cover something here. People are already asking us, well, 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 I mean, how do we get this information? Literally, it's like the doctor's giving you the, the, the biohacker's quick course on everything you need to know to manage your own, your own health in terms of like the, let me give you what's in the content. You've got five lessons you recorded in your studio for us, epigenetics one and two, how lifestyle choices can influence your genetic destiny. This is where the practicalities are on the diet and exercise stress management and how that affects the the baseline. Then you go into intermittent fasting, discussing the benefits of it, the metabolism, brain function, longevity, and you actually link it into the spiritual teaching because as we know, fasting is a biblical mandate. Now we find out it's got some, maybe God is trying to recalibrate his people chemically to get stuff out of the way so they could function the way he wants them to. I'll leave that to your lesson. The power of the second brain unveiling the gut-brain connection and how diet affects mental, emotional health. And then this big one, anxiety and depression, offering holistic approaches to managing mental health, integrating faith and practical strategies to foster peace and resilience, the hormone therapy, the anxiety and depression uh, bonus material, all of that you can get. And I think we have now secured level10biohacker.com. That's going to be level 10 because I'm all about level 10. Peak performance for believers is hacking these codes. We've got the biohack right here. The level10biohacker.com. 
Uh, and uh, Dr. Neil Goodman, I believe that uh, this, the, 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 and you put all your PowerPoints in there too, your hundreds. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, my slides are in there because people will want to pace this at their own speed. I talk and present the material like, uh, you know, like you said, uh, Lance, I don't dumb it down. I give big words, I, I, but I explain those words and I sort of peel back the onion. But so people can do it at their own pace. They can run through that PowerPoint at their own speed. They can print it off. They can refer to it as I lecture and speak to them and they can follow along and take notes. Amazing. But, but I just can't emphasize enough. I sat through this, you know, I have ADD. And, uh, and I could sit through it, and I was engaged the whole time because of the, of the, the nature of the content. My father-in-law, my wife's dad, is a doctor, was a doctor. Pat, he delivered more babies in Levittown, Pennsylvania than anybody else. Went to Temple uh, University after World War II. And I, I developed a fascination through my wife with the whole area of biohacking because she really believed that this physiologic or this medical aspect is a big is is one third of your human experience, and you better you better be the one who knows more about it than the guy down the street or God help you, the pharmaceutical company. So here's what I want you to do: I want you to go to level10biohacker.com, and what would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical school for for eight years, you're going to be able to get basically in like five, six, or seven lessons, I'm saying the essentials that you need to be your own doctor, take care of your own family's health. And I and I think we put this thing on uh, at such a low price that I'm not going to tell you what the price is. I'm going to let you go find it because it's it's not what you think it is. It's It certainly isn't what a, what a medical seminar symposium would normally be. But we want to get this material out to all of our people. Go to level10biohacker.com and make sure you get this material for yourself. God is present in our DNA. And I explain that sequencing in my lecture material and expose the truth that people need to know to know that God is with them always. Yeah, actually, you do that. You do a, you do a, a medical um, version of the DNA and show how it ties right into the, the Hebraic structure of things. It's fascinating. So uh, I can't, I can't uh, be more enthusiastic about this. Carl, do you have any final thoughts on why this is important? On why it's important, uh, not that would be succinct. It's just it's an incredible wealth of information and insight that will profoundly impact your life if you take action. And you can activate your epigenetics so that way you can be better tomorrow than you are today. Yeah, man, and I'm all about reverse aging. That's what I'm into. I, I'm, that's what I'm going to go for, Doc. I'm going to go back. I want to add 10 years uh, of youth and energy, not just 10 years of longevity creeping around a rest home or something. <laughs> We want people to be the best version of themselves. They are given the genetic inf information, their genetic structure, and we want them to achieve that goal to be the best version of themselves so they can live a long and healthful lifespan. Level10biohacker.com. You better learn how to be your own doctor. You've got the opportunity here. Thank you very much, doctor. Dial in right now. Go to level10biohacker.com and take action. Check out the uh, offer that is there and uh, learn how to be the smart medical student that you're capable of being. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow. Did you enjoy this latest episode? Please remember to share it with your friends because the more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to navigate the world.